Hi everyone, my name's Anthony Cummins and welcome to this. We're going to do another total book review. And today we're going to be talking about Christians in Japan. Now, uh, I got a bunch of books from Total, and they said to me, you know, will you review them, Anthony? And I got this one, which is In Search of uh, Japan's Hidden Christians. Uh, that's the book. It's by Tuttle. It is in hardback, which is the only way it should be done. It is approximately, let me just get you a page count here, guys, approximately 225 pages long, and it's a discovery about sort of the origin of Christianity in Japan. Now, when I first got this, I thought, is this going to be a bit boring? Is this going to be a bit bad? But to be honest, it's probably been one of the best books I've read from the 12 I got. Now, the reason is this. I'm obsessed with Sengoku period Japan. I'm talking old Japan, you know, with where it was battle-torn. Now, and for me, I love to get a glimpse of inside that time. And it just didn't click, it didn't cross my mind to check the Christian uh, sort of like accounts of it or the Christian, uh, you know, records or books on Christianity, more I should say. Because, to be honest, loads of the information is from the late Sengoku period, which is really good. Now what I'm going to do, instead of like harp on about the book, I'm going to give you some facts that it says about Christians in Japan. They're not my facts, they're not my research, it all comes from this book, so you have to trust this man's research or debate against him in this. But what I'm going to do now is list some of the most important, or the most interesting things I think the book has come up with. The first Christians seem to come along in 1549. And I think the level that we can get to in Christianity, in Christian converts, is about 300,000. Which is a, is a massive number. Not compared to the population, but still it's a big number. Now Christianity was banned from Japan in 1614. So in only about 60 years it went through its you know, it's, um, it's, sorry, it'd be its origins in Japan through to being banned and outright got rid of. Of course it carried on in secret, but you know, it's a very short history inside of Japan. What was interesting is that they had to translate the word God, and at first they were trying to use gods that they had, or, you know, people in their pantheon, which led to confusion. So in the end, they had to create a word for God, which was Deus. Now, the Christians had a big problem with something in Japan. On the whole, it seems the Christians are quite impressed with the Japanese. Whenever you read an old account of a Christian or a missionary going to Japan, they're like, how do they do it without God? It's impressive. But what the Christians and the Jesuits and all this, the, they couldn't get um, over was the homosexuality. Homosexuality in Japan, is, it was rife. And they were like, we, you know, you've you got to stop having sex with young boys and men. This is not good enough. And of course, the Japanese are like, why? It's perfectly fine. I'm having a lovely afternoon with Gerald. When I've been in Japan, I get quite annoyed with Christmas in Japan. It really, really winds me up. Is you'll be in Japan and the Christmas decorations are out and they've got little crucifixes on and everybody's got a Father Christmas and it's really, really shallow and it's really quite horrible when you're there. And and I'm and I, for years I'm like, oh, the Christians in Japan, you know, Christmas in Japan. But actually, the first Christmas in Japan was let me check this. 1552 and uh, so yeah they've had it there for quite some time of course Christmas was a different thing back then it was mainly a mass and it wasn't what you uh, you know experience today but yeah they had Christmas in Sengoku period Japan crazy now in 1556 you get your first Christian martyr in Japan which is a woman who's beheaded who's praying by a cross and she they take her head off she's the first Christian martyr Japanese people couldn't get past the fact that the soul is eternal. They were like, if the soul is eternal, does that make you a god? In 1579, we have like a mass convert of 100,000 converts. And you have um, problems with, you know, between the ruling uh, powers at the time. And apparently there was an argument between uh, some of the Jesuits and uh, some samurai in front of Oda Nobunaga. And uh, one of the opposing men tried to get a person, tried to cut their head off and get them to show them where the immortal soul is. Because they were that angered at the concept of the immortal soul. They were like, right, if I take his head off, you show me where it is. And Nobunaga in the end is like, right, all right, calm down, everyone. This is getting silly. Where's Gerald? Come on, come on. 1587 sees one of the first times Christians start to be cast out. They start to be problems with, with what, how they're going along. Did you know in the late 1500s, four Japanese people travelled round Europe and Rome and everything and they became a little bit of a celebrity and they came back to Japan and um, 
were, you know, obviously dressed as Westerners and had learnt Western ways and seen the way of the world and, and they obviously had a great tale to tell. But it's weird that this is Sengoku period Japan and they're touring Rome. It just goes to show how much um, Japan was open in those days. The first Japanese priest is in 1601. Then, as, as time goes by, you start to see the persecution of Christians, and you get uh, about 20-odd people hugging crosses, ready to die for their faith, and they, they also become martyrs. At this point, you also get William Adams. Do we all remember William Adams? He's the main um, protagonist in um, uh, the Shogun, the TV series, and he's a real character who came about in Japan, and he was the one who befriended Tokugawiyasu, and he's there at the time when this, this movement of Christians was about. You even get priest holes in Japan. If you've not been to sort of like uh, England, you can go to old houses and pre see priest holes where they used to hide Catholic priests. And it seems they had the same in Japan where they were hiding Christian priests so the priests could do their worship in the, um, you know, the silent hours and then move around to different houses. Now it seemed that Japan was embracing martyrdom. So uh, they were like, what can we do? The Japanese are quite happy with dying for God. So uh, they decided instead of just execution, they would torture people to death horribly. And this sort of led to a, a decline in those people who wanted to be martyred. Now the 1630s, you get the Shimabara Rebellion, which is known as a massive Christian rebellion. But it's, see, after reading that and a little bit of knowledge, it seems there's a little bit more to it than that. But there were many Christians there, and it, it is considered a Christian rebellion. But the book will go into it a bit more. But what this means, or what's nice, is the fact that you have this idea of a Japanese battle, one of the last Japanese battles. Um, and it's uh, basically people flying Christian crosses and Christian um, flags you know, in Japan in this early time, in fact, one of the most, one of the last important things was, you know, has a heavy Christian influence in a Christian battle. Now, the author says that this battle that we're talking about has almost the same amount of deaths as Nagasaki, the uh, the bomb on Nagasaki. I haven't checked those figures, but the you know the the Shimabara um, rebellion, they they were literally massacred. And uh, apparently the numbers are the same as Nagasaki, which was, you know, if that's correct, that's an amazing piece of information. But on the whole, there's some really interesting facts about Christians. But for those who want to know more about warring periods of Japan or Sengoku Japan, it's nice just to, to see those little bits of um, images coming through. Uh, my only problem with these sort of books are I always try to give a bit of a negative part of the review or a bit of an honest part of the review. And one of my only problems is the the holiday sort of, the travel style writing, where it's like, oh, I was on the train to here and we got off here and I, no, I think those days are well and truly gone because, you know, so many people have been to Japan now and you don't need those bits of information. I was on the train to here and we changed straight now. I think those days are gone. You know, we have Google Earth now and, and you know, the internet. We don't need these books to explain what the train was like. So, uh, but apart from that, what a smashing little read, what a smashing book. I would definitely recommend it, I enjoyed that. Uh, In Search of Japan's Hidden Christians, A Story of Suppression, Secrecy and Survival by John Duggle. Uh, I recommend it guys, go and have a read and uh, I'll see you next time with a Tuttle book review.